It's 11 p.m. I've just dropped off my date and I'm walking back home. We met a few days ago in college. We talked in the library and I wanted to get to know her. And she seemed like a nice girl. Like she was well put together. She was dressed nicely and she, like she thanked me after we ate and everything. So now I'm walking back home. I'm on my phone. I'm just checking Discord because I haven't replied all day. And I realized there's so many messages for my friend's group chat that I haven't responded to. So I'm explaining to them where I've been. Oh, I went out to London. I took this girl out on a date. And I have no idea why I said this next thing. But I told them exactly how much I spent. I kind of just it into conversation i said i spent 90 pounds on food and if you're not from the uk that's like 110 115 dollars so it's like it's a decent amount for a meal and looking back at it i think a lot of it came down to ego i kind of just wanted like that validation for my friends to say that oh why did you spend so much money and i could be one like macho man say it wasn't anything it's fine and it became kind of like this inside joke within the friend group where they kind of took the piss out of me for spending that money on a girl so this was about two years ago but recently me and danny were in a call it was like 3 a.m and you know when you're on a discord call and it's kind of just like you're both just lying back and it's like zero brain cells in action it's just kind of vibes just talking to your mate but out of nowhere danny just kind of laughs and he's like hey, remember when you spent 90 pounds on a gun and we laughed at you and i was like just joking along i was like yeah yeah i remember that and then he said looking back at it it's not actually that bad we kind of had this crazy perspective shift danny's an editor as well just because of what we do we're able to say 90 pounds isn't a lot and it's like this isn't me trying to be ungrateful i understand for a lot of people our age we're both 18 90 pounds on a single meal for two people is a shit ton it was for us two years ago and we kind of just sit there and he tells me something that really stuck with me like by definition this is what people meant by financial freedom all this time i'd hear like these finance gurus youtubers talking about oh become financially free make 50k a month and travel the world and like buy this designer watch and like these cars but this was when i realized financial freedom isn't spending 400 g's on a car but financial freedom it's being able to eat out without checking the price financial freedom it's being able to buy clothes not because it's designer or anything but you genuinely like this piece of clothing and you buy it just like without checking the price so you know you can afford whatever this piece of clothing is financial freedom is going on these type of dates and knowing that you can cover it no matter what just imagine how much more present you'd be knowing that you could spend of course if there's like a thousand dollar stake that i need to get it's like that's when money is probably going to enter my mind again but if it's like a couple hundred bucks even i know i could cover it at the end financial freedom is just being able to live your day-by-day -day life without the stresses of money and this isn't coming from like a guy who's like a millionaire or anything so you can take whatever i say with a grain of salt but over the last three years i've been doing editing as a job i started off charging like five ten dollars a video and then for an entire year i'm doing it for 15 bucks and i continued scaling that up working with larger and larger creators moving into the content editing space and working with these huge guys with 10 20 million subscribers and now i'm able to say that i'm charging seven eight nine hundred a video even up to like over a thousand i don't know if this is a lot or a little not a little i know it's not a little but i don't know if it's average or a lot for my age but i've got like 20 to 30 grand right now in my savings account but i would say like i've achieved a decent amount for my age so that's not like 20 grand that i've made that 20 grand after spending after all my expenses i've just got sitting in an account and i want to clear it up now i'm not someone that like penny pinches i'm not that type of guy where it's like i'll go out with my friends and i won't buy a coffee because i'm scared like i don't want my money to go down i had periods like that but they were so so depressing that i genuinely like just i hate my life i think i've come to a point now where i understand where my money would be best spent so like you know how you see me with um, this black t-shirt everywhere like a lot of people think that this is just something i do for videos if you know me irl or if you go down in the description go follow my insta you'll realize like in my stories and stuff i wear this same black t-shirt this same silver chain pretty much every single day maybe you are someone that really values like designer clothes fashionable brands and stuff but i've come to a point now where i understand me spending on clothes it's almost like I get like a temporary high and then it kind of just goes down the next day and I need to do it again. I've realized I get the most like satisfaction out of my money when it's more on experiences. It's things like eating out every few days, buying my friends like small gifts, not like fucking expensive ass gifts, but things like, oh, just buy them a coffee or pay for their meal one time. It's these small things that I've found bring me a lot more like happiness. Like this sounds autistic, but I said this to one of my friends and he understood it after a while. I like to think of things in terms of like happiness ROI. So when I spend money or I put energy into something, how much happiness will it bring me back? So me buying someone coffee, it cost me what? Three, four dollars. But the happiness I get back from that, I would say me seeing someone smile and knowing that I did something for someone, that is worth a couple bucks. Me spending like 20, 30 bucks on this silver chain. I wear it every single day. I really like it. I would say that's 20 to 30 bucks well spent. Me spending my money on my health. So I buy like supplements. I pay for a gym membership. I bought my own like home gym as well. It's something that genuinely means a lot to me. I like my fitness. So it's like there's a high happiness ROI with the things I spend. So that's like the first proper tip I'd have to give you where try to figure out what actually makes you happy when it comes to spending your money?
Because I remember me in first year college, so about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I used to be someone that you might not believe me. I would go shopping pretty much either every day or every other day. So like every two days. So my college, the way our timetable used to work was you would have like lessons throughout the day and sometimes you'll have like a two, three, four, five hour break in between them. And usually you're not going to stay within college for five, six hours. You're allowed to go out. And me and my friends, what we'd do, we'd just go to town. So the shopping center was about 40 minutes away. We'd go, we'd mess about and inevitably when you're in a shopping mall, you end up buying things like that's pretty inevitable. Even though I used to go pretty much every day on my break saying that I'm not gonna buy anything I would always come back home with my shopping bags in my hands and my mom's like disappointed face opening the door when she sees them And I think those few like months, I think it lasted for like four, five, six months Genuinely, I was really happy while I was doing it I think that was probably like, I would say highlight of the week It would be the highlight of my every two days where I knew I would go shopping with my lads But it was during one of the holidays, I think it was the Easter holiday where I wasn't going out as often Naturally, because we don't have the breaks, we don't have like like everyone coming together we didn't go out together as often so i didn't go shopping as much and i remember during these times i would edit i would try to like work and everything but i felt like this craving to go out almost like i felt like a fucking crack addict where i needed to go back into my service i needed to go shopping again a part of me would be saying to go but another part of me would be saying that oh you're not going to be with any of your friends so it's not really any point and i'm kind of just jumping back and forth between these two mindsets and all this time i'm supposed to be working this decision making process this craving gets so strong that i can barely work so what i do next i stand up i grab my coat i grab my wallet and i start walking to the shopping center Two hours later, I'm back home. Mum opens the door, disappointed face again, and then I'm able to work. And as like weird as this sounds, I think I genuinely had a shopping addiction. I've done a lot of journaling on this as like, why did I have such a strong craving to go shopping? And what I found it came down to was, I really liked the social validation of knowing, first of all, knowing that you have nice clothes. And second of all, people looking at you and wondering how you have money to spend. Because even when I was editing like gaming videos, Fortnite videos and things like that, I was still making, compared to other people my age, a good amount of money. I was making like 800, 1000 bucks a month. And it was almost like I craved this social validation of people knowing I had money. So I would go on these shopping sprees and after enough time, it became came almost like you know when you see a drug addict on the streets and first they're like they take it they really enjoy it and they get hooked and then for the next like two months they're taking it taking it but after a while you see the little crackhead like smoking a line and he's not even like high he's not even enjoying himself so he needs to get more and more and it's like you just see his life deteriorate in front of him that's genuinely what it felt like when i was buying shit for other people's validation I really recommend taking the time to look for your bank account, look for your PayPal, look at wherever you spend your money from and genuinely ask yourself with every single one, what was my real reason for buying that? In fact, I'll do it now. I'll do it on camera. I didn't expect to do this, but so I've got two bank accounts. I've got my personal and my business one where I deal with all like editing related stuff. Like just looking through this now, you've got cafes, you've got restaurants, you've got orders from Amazon and those are all pretty much books. So I'm a fucking nerd in it. So I like reading books. I think it's benefited me a lot. You've got my gym membership, you've got more food, you've You've got me giving like money to my mom. You've got my Apple Music stuff. And that's pretty much it when it comes to my personal account. It's like food, books, and me giving money to like my family and friends. These are the things that genuinely mean a lot to me. And it shows through my bank account. Last year, if you looked at my bank accounts, all it would be H&M, River Island, JD. It would be just clothing store after clothing store. And when I took a moment to look at it and I realized like I've spent all this money, I would look at it. Not one of them made me happier in a significant way. What I'm telling you isn't to live like crazy frugal lifestyle. I think there is power in living a frugal lifestyle, like living, oh, don't buy the coffee, oh, make sure you don't spend money here and there. But I think to keep yourself happy is a very good investment. Like there's studies to show where happy workers are the most productive workers. For you to invest in your happiness, your productivity, your health, these are things that are going to make you more productive. And when you are more productive, you can imagine, let's say you had a video and you could get it done twice as fast, you would quite literally double your income. There's a linear correlation. So just figure out what are some of the things that genuinely make you happy. If you stripped away all the bullshit, when I was shopping every single day, I told myself that, oh, I was just into fashion. I just really like clothes. No, looking back at it, I can admit it. But at the time, I almost like deluded myself to think I was doing it for myself. Genuinely take a moment to think when you look at your bank account and you see every single expense that's going out, if they don't either make you happy or make you more money, just double think whether that's an expense you should keep spending. And that brings us on to our next point, which transitions quite nicely. When you are trying to increase how much 
much money you're making or how much money you have i think this is quite a taboo topic where it's looked down upon to say that you want to have a lot of money not even like a lot just to say you want to be financially stable i don't know why it's looked down upon it's like i can openly say that i want to make a lot of money you're watching a video about how to make money as an editor if you watch my videos most of my videos are about how to increase your income as an editor so it's clear like you are someone like me you are someone that values this area of life and a big reason why i think i got to where i am now in three years rather than most people which take like four five six years it's because of this quote i have no idea who i learned it from it might have been alex becker or sam ovens and they were kind of just like shitting on this whole idea of like oh save your way to millions um, if you saved five bucks every single day for the rest of your life you would make twenty thousand more extra and it's like they were kind of just shitting on that whole idea these guys are like some high level entrepreneurs and what they said is the reason that they spend all their lives penny pinching and never making anything out of their financial lives it's because they forget about the one thing that matters most you can't save what you don't have your focus should purely be on increasing your income and as stupid as this sounds it's like oh well if you want to make more money just make more money if you're homeless just buy a house but it's like most of us are told okay don't spend money in order to become rich if your expenses are like dead zero what does it matter if you also have zero coming in if your income right now is 500 bucks a month what does it matter if you save 10 bucks a month because you cancel this one subscription you're spending all this time wondering about how can i crack this one thing how can i save this one little bit here you're spending all your time trying to save like a little bit here and there when the main issue is that you literally don't have money coming in and i can't tell if i'm losing my mind by saying this but like i used to be like this as well where i would wonder where can i save five bucks a month by cancelling this one subscription where can i spend four hours searching on youtube for non-copyright music instead of spending 20 bucks a month on a music subscription model i was spending my time thinking oh how can i get the free version of this paid software when in reality the reason i don't have as much money as i want right now it's not because i saved 10 20 50 100 bucks today that's not why i'm broke the reason i was broke is because there was no money coming in and it's like as soon as this guy i was watching his video and he drilled it into my head i realized like it doesn't matter if i save a bit of money here and there all i need to do is improve my skills and learn like the business techniques and what i need to know learn from editors that have already done it and just learn how to increase my income at a certain point it's like when you make a decent amount of money it doesn't matter if you spend five ten bucks on something that genuinely makes you happy because the effort that you spent to save 50 bucks the same amount of effort you could put into another place you could put that effort into learning into practicing in premiere learning a new effect instead of you saving 50 bucks and whether you succeed or not that's a different question but you could have made an extra five six hundred bucks per video within less than six months my prices went from 200 to clients paying me over a thousand six months do you think i would have made that if i was thinking i wonder if i could buy like the cheapest monitor possible if i could spend four hours looking online for like a discounted version i wonder if i could budget my entire day and think oh i can chop out 50 cent a month every single month after 500 years i would make an extra 15 pounds it's like none of that matters i wouldn't be here today if i didn't purely focus on just increasing my earning potential the best thing you can do no matter what point you're at in your career right now whether you've just started you just started on like premiere or you are literally already making like two three k a month anywhere the best thing you can do is invest ruthlessly into your craft i've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on my setup i've spent thousands on mentors on courses on paid education i've spent thousands on my room just to make sure that it's somewhere i actually want to work and every single time i've made a decision where i tell my dad like oh i'm gonna spend 500 bucks on this one course even though it's my own money and like i worked for it he starts getting pissed at me i don't think it's out of hatred i think it's genuinely out of love where it's like oh you've worked so hard for your money don't waste it but when i try to explain to him that me spending 500 bucks on this course me paying this guy 400 dollars for one hour of his time i've done that before and my dad is fuming and without fail every single time after a couple of months he'll look at me and I'll, he'll ask like oh so what did you learn from that oh how is the business going the business has always grown i've always been able to say that oh i learned this 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 from this mentor and he'll be like oh i don't really understand it but as long as you're happy like you keep doing that and then when i tell him that it made me double my income within a couple of months because he unlocked like one limiting belief he unlocked this like one constraint here. he told me this thing that i didn't know those few things can genuinely double, triple, 4x, 5x your income. And that's when suddenly he'll be like, okay, maybe that $500 purchase, that $1,000 purchase, you spending a couple of grand on your PC just to make it like 10% better. Maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Like I said, what you're trying to achieve here, it's not like most people your age. Even most people older than you, your parents. For a lot of us, it's like what we're trying to achieve is a lot greater than what our parents have done or even hope for themselves to do. And that's not us like shitting on them or like being rude or like condescending in any way. It's just us saying that we are super ambitious 
guys we are editors that took this thing we started it off and now we want to take it further and see how far we could go with this this is a game we enjoy playing and we've seen the potential and when they start seeing us kind of play into these passions play into this ambition it's not something they're used to but you need to remind yourself that if these people these guys that are trying to give you advice these guys that in your personal life they'll say you're too obsessed i don't know why you spent that money here i don't know why you keep talking about this if they aren't in a position you want to be in they aren't making the money you want to make if they don't have a life you want to live clearly whatever they've done it hasn't worked for them so do you think by you following their advice that it's going to get you to where you want to go I promise you, you spending the time, your energy, your focus into purely increasing your earning potential through learning, through paid mentorships. I think courses and mentorships and communities, they have like a bad rap. And rightly so, honestly, it's like a lot of them are scams. I'll keep it 100. I've been through a lot of courses. To be honest, for full transparency, I've gone through a lot of courses, not because I enjoy them or I think they're going to be super good. It's purely so that I can make sure my stuff is a lot better. I have this written on my wall, actually. Give so much away that it makes your competition insecure about what they serve. Maybe it's kind of fucked to say that, but... but the way I know whether I'm on the right track or not is when all my stuff free and paid is better than whatever they can offer you. When you join what we're doing here, when you actually put the time in to learn, take what you've already started and take it further, you'll be so grateful, so glad that you made that decision. Does it take hard work to do what we're doing here? Of course. This isn't me being one of those how to make 10k a month with two clicks of a button. It's like that's not what we're teaching here. If you want to make quick money, you can go watch another top 10 ways to increase your income as a video editor. We've watched videos, shitty videos like that. But here you are continuing to watch them because they haven't worked for you. Clearly, whatever they're teaching, it hasn't worked. And there was this quote, I don't know if it's actually by Albert Einstein, but everyone puts it with his face. A person who does the same thing again and again and expects a different result, that's the definition of insanity. For that dumbass editor that watches these other guys promising him that oh you'll make so much money you'll make so much money but his actual like editing hasn't changed his actual income hasn't changed since watching them he is quite literally insane for thinking watching more of their videos will help there's a whole topic on this one i'm not gonna get into it now because we've been recording for like a fucking hour bro but there's a lot of i wouldn't say frauds but dishonest and misleading people in this space right now i've been editing as like a job about three years now i started doing fortnite videos on my own channel when i was 14 years old you can see my portfolio you can see who i've worked with if that is something you want to be more like then my content is where i share that story i'll be honest i think authenticity and being like hyper open about what i do it's something that doesn't come naturally to me i don't know if you picked that up on these videos where i kind of go out of my way to tell stories about what's happened in my life like i'll tell you about embarrassing things that i've done i'll tell you about moments of success i've had i'll tell you about moments of weakness that i've had and usually i've always been like a bit of an introverted guy as a kid where i wouldn't share these things out loud but it was during these like coaching calls when i would be coaching other editors like live and i would kind of tell them stories about how i learned certain things so the way you see in these videos and they would come back to me telling me how impactful that story was but me saying this one detail about how i lost the girl because of whatever i did of me saying oh i lost this client because i made this one mistake of me like sharing my l's pretty much and me sharing my w's as well i realized if me sharing my authentic story and the experiences i've had if that means even one more editor can take this further and turn what he once did as a hobby however many months years ago and turn it into a full-time income then i think it's worth me almost like sitting in this comfort me going through that little bit of hardship of that awkwardness when i tell you a story about what's happened with me when i realized that the impact we have here is genuinely with thousands thousands of editors i was journaling and i realized that if i can get even 1000 editors to something like very reasonable let's say 2k a month some editors will think like oh that's too crazy i can't even imagine that but a lot of the guys that i've actually coached will know a lot of the guys that i've gone for my content 2k a month is very reasonable when it comes to editing and i kind of had this realization like with what i'm teaching with what i'm sharing with the coaching i do with the content i make if we can get a thousand guys to make 2k per month editing that's two million dollars every single month for our people two million dollars a month Times up by 12, that's 24 million dollars a year. It was in that moment I realized what we're doing here, it's no longer me just like kind of talking to a camera and doing whatever. 24 million dollars a year by getting a thousand editors to just 2k a month. And I've coached editors to get to 10, 11, 12k. Just like Eros, I've coached them up recently to get to two consecutive 10k months in a row. Of course, he's done the work himself, but he thanks me saying that a lot of what I've taught is the reason why he's making as much money as he is. Him saying that he's retiring his parents. Him saying that he's able to give his girlfriend nice dates and shit. It's like I've realized the impact i have the impact we have with what we're doing here it's bigger than us manipulating a few pixels and making a couple hundred bucks a day even just speaking now i'm realizing 16 15 year old me couldn't even imagine what i'm doing now what we've built here this community of genuinely driven video editors that started off doing whatever but now they actually want to take it further 
this community that we've built as cringe as it sounds we're genuinely changing the way that thousands of guys live like i said as cringe as it sounds it's like oh financial freedom achieve financial whatever but it is genuinely life-changing money for most people if you're someone that follows me with a lot more loyalty you know that 2k is just a start i say that as like don't be like this like proper unambitious editor at least have like a goal of 2k but you can go a lot further than that i've done it for myself i've done it with probably like 15 20 other editors i know what i'm teaching works and i find it so fulfilling to know i'm able to share that in a space where everyone's kind of like talking so nicely telling you about oh video editing is so awesome here's a top 10 ways all this shit that sounds good on paper but doesn't actually help you the guys that follow me know this i walk you through the actual experiences that made me the editor i am today so if that is something you want to be a part of we'd love to have you i think it'd be awesome for you to join us scroll down right now click the red subscribe button and there's also in the description you'll find there's a discord server you can join it will be editors just like you on the same path just as driven i think it'd be awesome for you to meet them also go watch this video right here i think it's something you'll enjoy peace